Guys and gals, what, did you just what's up the camera? No, no. Alright. <laughs> I'm waiting for the camera to do that too. Guys and girls, welcome to episode 14, season 2 Comics Remixed. I'm your host, Junior Ruiz, alongside... David Sanchez. Yep. Thank you for joining us. Today. Thank you. Two episodes left in this season, besides this one. So... <sighs> Thank you to all the hardcores that have been keeping up with all our episodes. We really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you to the naysayers out there. You guys know who you are. The <laughs> bastards. Thank you to all the, the collectors that so far have been opening up to us and we can film their private collections and to all the stores out there that we have and have not yet to visit. So yeah, thanks. Um yeah, so let's get the let's get it going here. Your boy Michael Bay, man. My boy. Yeah, he got <laughs> what, he got smacked over smacked around with uh with an air conditioner? Is that your people? That's is that like, that's like a port, bunch of Puerto Ricans that's that's jumping out of a van? <laughs> <laughs> like, what happened there? All right. Does he owe people money? The original story, for those that don't know, was uh, last Thursday, reportedly, uh, Michael Bay was attacked, or he was approached by two gentlemen on set. Right. The two gentlemen were basically upset that Michael Bay has shut down these you know, city streets. Which set was this on? The Quarry Bay one, the Hong Kong set. That doesn't sound like a Hong Kong set. Like, when I we were first know. talking about it, I was trying to... Like imagine, I know they had a Hong Kong set, right? Right off on a, on a, like Thirty Fifth and Damon down okay. on the south side of Chicago. They posted up all these uh, like Chinese characters. Did it throw like everybody building. off? It did. Like, it did. After a while, <laughs> I had no idea what was going on because first of all, they cleaned I, the graffiti. They cleaned the graffiti on this abandoned building. So they like, didn't clean it. They just green screened over it. No, they 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 actually power washed it. And I'm like, why the fuck are they cleaning that old ass building? And then they put a Chinese. They put the Chinese characters on there. And uh, for a while, I'm thinking like, "Oh, is this a new Banksy? Some some graffiti uh, artist up there?" And then you hide. I was like, "No, they're filming Transformers." No, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally, literally just gonna drive off the bridge <laughs> and just like go in there. But then, knowing what I know now, it's probably best that I did. So anyway, these two guys approach Bay supposedly because you know, due to the filming, they've closed city streets off and whatnot. And their businesses have been hurting. So they're like, hey, Bay, you know, because of you filming your film, our businesses are suffering. We're not making money. We want some sort of kickback, you know, like a protection racket kind of thing. He's like, well, I don't think I can pay you. You know, that's you have to talk to the studio, but I don't think they cover this. You know, this is with the city and the permits and all this shit, you know. So supposedly they got mad and they roughed them up. That was the original story. So Transformers 4 is being made with mom money. Mob money, basically. I guess so. Much of Italian. But that's the original story. Another reason why this can't be Hong Kong. So the update to the story is that that, there wasn't the, that he got approached by two gentlemen over this or whatever. Um, a guy supposedly very uh, strung out on narcotics. So uh, somehow, I don't know where the hell security was, waltzed onto the set carrying an air conditioner and swung it at Michael Bay's head. But Michael Bay, being the ninja that he is, ducked out of the way and wrestled the air conditioner away from said uh, narcotic fiend. So he didn't shoot him in the eye with lens flares? No. He tried to wrestle Roman him. candles and shit. No, he did not. You know, the guy was probably like on bath salts. There I could be know. more to this. The guy was probably strung out, naked, and like shaking his ass. Like, air conditioners are heavy alone, man. How do you Dude, just swing an air conditioner? When you're on like bath salts. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah, when you're up there, you know, coked up or whatever the hell it is, you, you don't know feel it would be anything. hilarious? This guy's so messed up. He thought he was lifting the biggest heaviest air conditioner he thought it was an actual transformer and it's transformed damn you (laughs) what if it were like a foam air conditioner prop that would be funny that michael bay had a wrestle (laughs) of a guy that was strung (laughs) out on like pcp or something you know people we're not making this up this reminds me of last season when we talked about the brazilian batman and people were called us out on it no this is serious you can go online google it this is a legit story which brazilian batman is still going strong Props to you, man. Batman Inc. all the way. He gets great photo ops, by the way. I'm sure he would. He's like Peter Parker, if anything. I don't know how he's setting up these cameras, but the guy is getting some great shots. So Michael Bay wrestles an air conditioner. Bonus well, No, he, he wrestled the guy holding the air conditioner. <laughs> yeah. Well, he wrestled the air conditioner away, supposedly, and then the guy was uh, assisted by two other guys, and the three of them got arrested or whatever. And then the end of the article goes on to say, don't forget Transformers 4, Age of Extinction, in theaters, J- June 27th. Which I'm pretty sure a security guard just escorted the guy off the premises, but Michael Bay paid them to say that now, he sprung okay, into action. Let me ask you, and I'm being serious. If a guy no, threw an not. air conditioner, no, I'm as serious <laughs> as I can be with this. Yes. A guy tro- tries to throw an air conditioner at you, 
Okay. Okay. What is your first reaction? Move to the side. Okay. After that, <laughs> what is your reaction? Uh, what do you do? Okay, you've do docked out of the way of this air conditioner. What do you do? Do you know, do man, you go weird. and decide? Isn't that like so weird. Do like, you decide that you're gonna wrestle an air conditioner away from somebody? That's kind of like a waste of an air conditioner. That's like gold in Chicago. It's right. kind of like really stupid. <laughs> I would actually probably just talk to the guy. Be like, hey, man. But would you, you try to wrestle it away? For like some money. Would you try to wrestle it away? No. Okay, Steve. I wouldn't either. That I'd be dead scared that the thing is gonna fall on my feet. That shit hurts. Air conditioners are not light. Plus, when you carry it and there's that grill part in the back yep. and you like you scrape your forearm yep. on it, that's actually more annoying than carrying the damn air conditioner. But apparently not, because the guy's coked up. Unless he's carrying it with the front of the air conditioner on his chest, so those parts that scrape you up are on the back. Because yeah. sometimes they're on the back. Oh, like try to do one of these. Yeah, so he's carrying it like this. Because my air conditioner's like that, where mm -hmm. it doesn't have really have the vents on the side; they're all on the back. I always just carry it like this, like an old kicker box. Right. It's less pressure on your lower back. Well, I don't have far to carry. Mine doesn't weigh as much, but still, it's still scary. Yeah, either way, Michael Bay, you could have just approached this a lot differently. I'm waiting for Vince McMahon to book this at WrestleMania. Michael Bay wrestles the air conditioner on the grandest stage of them all. What's the set date for Transformers? You just said June it. June 27, 2014. Man, really excited about that one. Man. Next year is going to be a great year for movies. Ninja Turtles, Transformers, Captain America, Guardians of the Galaxy. Help me out here. I know there's more. Star Wars. Star Wars. Oh, how the hell did I forget Star Wars? X-Men, Days of Future Past. No, Star Wars is 2015. That's why you don't fucking talk off camera. You know, going and back to... I think to, that's uh, why people call me an asshole. Going back to Ninja Turtles, how would you feel if the more, like, the live-action Turtles came back to TV? To TV? Yeah. Like, like Next like, Mutation? Like, like, weekly episodes of... No, no, no Next Mutation. Just, like, a live-action version. More action-packed. Kind of like Arrow... But with turtles, are you really? And the, the reason why is this, why a really, is this a real question? Well, the reason I'm saying that is because uh, right now we have shows like Shield. DC is going to push uh, Gotham PD, but now we also have the the supposed indies that are really just rising and taking the next step into into TV production, like IDW. Okay, they've announced recently that they've created their entertainment <laughs> division, and they're going to be pushing for these shows. And it's kind of like, why not? They have huge licensing power. They got the Joes. They got Transformers. They got they got all kinds of, of characters there. They should be first in line to make a pitch to write those shows. And that's the position that they're putting themselves into. So what okay, so it's not to create their own shows, it's to write the shows that already exist, is what you're well, saying. Well see that's just it. Right now they they don't have any shows out. Okay. But what if they could be the first ones to pitch for those shows before someone like Fox snaps? Okay, I see what you're saying. I see what you're That's saying. a smart move, man. Well, it is, because G.I. Joe currently doesn't have anything on the air. Transformers just finished. The Beast Hunters or whatever, Transformers Prime, that's done. The Can you see that as a weekly? That is a weekly. No, 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 like a live action, though. Like Transformers? Yeah. No. It'll suck rendering no. that. That would really suck, actually. <laughs> Too high oh, of a budget. Joe's live action. Joe's, that's I That's super realistic. Joe's, that I can see. That could happen right now. Yeah, that'd be good. So Just think about it. As a live action show, you don't have to necessarily cram all these characters into one hour and a half fuck fest. It could be just, you know, hey, we're going to introduce this Joe. Then give kind of each Joe a spot. They could splinter off, kind of like this and mission's Roblox happening won't be there, the mission's happening there. The Rock doesn't have to be there. No, he does not. He does not. But, like, you have IDW doing that. You have people cool. like Dynamite who have, like, the, the, the more old school gallery, like Mass. Like, everybody in Mass. Shadow. And, yeah. People who have already had yeah. some kind of serial in the past to come back to TV. How does that... I personally believe that would put the big two on their heels. What do you feel about that? That definitely would give them a kick in the ass. Definitely. How Let's do you see the pressure affecting the, them and... Well, their current plans for show and the show like Shield. Um, as far as Marvel goes, I could see Marvel just being like, "Well, we don't need Shield because we already rule the 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 big screen as it is. You know, we just do this for the they just trying to save face. Mm -hmm. I well, can see them doing that. They do need they do need Shield. Well, I know, but I'm saying as far as them saving face, right, right. You know, trying like saying, "Oh, these were unaffected by what they're doing." One of the big reasons DC pushed Smallville more than they did push uh, Superman movies because. Of so much money that comes out of TV mm -hmm. through all through all that advertising, so it is a huge deal if Shield fails. But to me, it was a big deal that when they came out with Shield, they didn't pepper in some superheroes almost immediately because it's so believable. Because especially now, right right next to it, you park a GI Joe, where it's all 
like superstar powered as far as like as far as main characters it to me that should send a huge kick right up their nuts and be like oh my god just give me a freaking superhero man i'm sorry that's just how i feel about that yeah well speaking about giving you superheroes marvel may have answered a lot of fans uh cries of bringing back peter parker for those of you who don't know spoiler alert Sensation, or excuse me, Superior Spider-Man number 19 was on sale two weeks ago. In that issue, um, for those that have been following, in issue 9, there was a mental battle between Doc Ock and Peter Parker. The best kind of battles. Where uh, Doc Ock eventually won and suppressed all of Peter's memories that he had not had to recall for himself, if that makes sense. So, in the current story arc of issue 17 through 19, we get because of the results of Age of Ultron, Marvel's time-space continuum screwed up, Spider-Man 2099 ends up coming back to 2013 and trying to stop something from happening in the future. Uh, something, you know, something happens in the past, right, right. messes up the future. Long story short, one of the things that was supposed to control the time device to send Spider-Man 2099 back was controlled by this, like, untested metal that only Peter had an access code to kind of balance out. So since Ock never had to really use that memory, mm, he has, right. it, went, it went away with the other memory. So he tried and tried and tried to remember what it was. He finally did, but by doing that, there's four uh, panels that show a shadowy figure, like an outline of somebody pushing a bunch of stuff away. Like, you know, it, for what readers are gathering, it's Peter coming back. Like the It was supposed memories. to be like a, like a split shot of Peter reawakening this kind of yeah kind of like yeah. just i'm back you know yeah. you wake up and take all this baggage off of me well, you know how i feel about the spider-man 29 i think we spoke spoke about this over the phone to me immediately i don't even know why i hated this cartoon I whoa, thought whoa, it sucked. Whoa, whoa. well no see that's two different things two no no different okay things. okay no no but th this is what i thought about it's it's almost the same basis but a retelling of it. it to me it was like spider-man unlimited where peter goes to save J. jonah from something and he gets stuck in this other world john john whatever it, well, it's it's almost like a reversal. Kind of. Spidey uh, 2099 came to do something, and now he's stuck here. Yeah. And he has to deal with so, it. So, yeah, skip the head. The Sorry, other thing man. that happened in the book was that as Spider-Man 2099 was going to go back to his normal time, they cut uh, somewhere, somebody in, uh, who I'm not going to mention, I'm not going to give you too many spoilers. Might as well spoil it. His grandfather. Or, excuse I'm me, his, his dad in the, uh, in the future. Uh, cut off the time thing now for those that don't know his dad doesn't know that that's his son he just knows him that's spider-man i hate spider-man he doesn't know spider-man's son like peter parker's son no 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 Where uh 2099 excuse me okay miguel o'hara miguel's his his well, dad he's latino his dad you know so he has all kinds of he doesn't know his dad doesn't know that spider-man 2099 is his son all right he doesn't know that miguel is even his son at all so so he traps him in the past so now 2099 spider-man takes a job as uh, his grandfather's assistant, making sure that, you know, as much as he hates his grandfather, nothing happens because if something happens, then he's not born. And that's and what And Cable did. comes in, body slides, shoots him down, time stream safe. That's it. Hey, man, you got to end the story at some point. I mean, how long, for how long do you think they're going to drag around this uh, Spider-Man 2099? Well, they seem to have closed it off with this for now. And like it looks like that's something they'll come back to later on. Now, uh, isn't Scarlet Spider getting canceled? And that's one of your favorite books. You're, you're a huge Spider-Man fan, that's a good and book. that's one of your favorites. Is this his replacement, basically? I don't know. That's a good question. This probably Venom ends this... Uh, Venom just ended this week with issue 42. Could it possibly be and another call like from like some executive Venom. saying, you know, we don't have budget for so many Spider-Man books? got to push these sweep these out of the way and bring in this guy as much fine. as i want to say yes for some you know i don't hate the guy personally because you know i've never met him but i think when you sit back and you look at the bigger picture of things i think dan slot knows what he's doing now don't get me wrong i'm not saying i'm a huge dan slot fan okay um i like his writing i really do but i'm not a huge fan um, but I will go ahead and say I think he really does know what he's doing. I think he has a way of, you know, he knows I started at point A, I want to get to point C, that's the finish. But from A to C, I'm going to throw you point B, and that point B is going to just take you all over the place so you have no idea so where point is So this is by design. From. Do you think Scarlet Spider reached a point already where he's peaked and that story has been told and now it's time to switch gears to come here to continue whatever his grandmaster plan is? I, no. I, I think no Scarlet Spider, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Scarlet Spider could still go. 
I really do. There's so much potential there. There yeah. really is. I mean, especially... I was well, he telling, doesn't get killed off, does he? I don't know. It's not over yet. Okay. He's still got another three issues. Um, but it's something that I was telling John earlier off camera. Um, one thing that I think the big two have problems with is when a book comes out, they have a creative team with it, obviously. Uh, and instead of nowadays where they say, you know what, let's switch the creative team because the book isn't selling, they just tend to kill the book off right then and there. That's nice like, because they're, they're like with DC, they'll switch creative some, teams. Like they just announced the cancellation of Vibe and Katana. Yeah, both characters suck. I read Vibe. I didn't really read Katana only because Ando said he was writing it, and you know how I feel about that. I don't. I still don't understand how Katana got a book. I don't know. She's got potential. Every character has potential. She does, man. But, but I think instead of you know, okay. hey, they they did that whole weird sword thing where she was talking to her husband or something. Yeah, her husband. It was a soul sword. Her husband was trapped. His her soul was trapped. Why soul couldn't the soul sword. sword just capture other swords and make her into a bad guy? I don't know. But my point is, like, see, that's the thing. That's all coming <laughs> off from one writer. Uh, Why not take another? You know, somebody else might have a fresh idea. Okay, you know what? Starting with this issue, new creative team instead of just canceling the book. Katana outright. has a soul sword. She means well. She collects too many souls. And becomes cable corrupted. Body slides. Becomes corrupted. <laughs> becomes super evil, and everybody has to gang up to take her down. Just wrote that. I wrote that. DC so can't you have it. <laughs> instead of canceling the book, throw you on there. There you go. Uh, I'm sorry, man. I'm going to have to mention this. We both kind of, like, had that cringy... I know I had that cringy feeling when I heard about the whole Superboy thing going on. I thought we weren't going to mention it. Okay, uh, for those of you who don't know or are going to hear about this... You guys are going to hear about this anyways. The, for the new DC announcements coming out of New York, uh, Superboy, the clone, is going to be gone. And he's going to be replaced by the real Superboy, who is the actual Spawn of Lois Lane and Superman, not a clone. Right, because the Superboy that exists now in the DCU, in the new 52 universe, is a future cl a clone of a future Lois and Clark. So somehow the Donner movies kind of made it into DC continuity? I'm still up. I don't, don't get me, dude. I'm still where the death of Superman counts in the new 52 but yet you got to remember. But this is another thing too. It's like this is all continuity errors because you got to remember in the, what happened at the end of Death of Superman. It's been five years. When did they have time to make a supposedly sixteen-year-old child? <laughs> exactly. But that's what I mean. In in the new Fifty Two universe, Death of Superman still happened. Now I remember when we read Death of Superman as kids, what happened? Because of that, we got four new Supermen. We got Superboy, Eradicator, yeah, they the Cyborg, and death. Steel. But that's what Superboy was a direct. And, uh, direct result of what happened in the death of Superman. I know they totally yeah. changed it here. I I always liked the fact that he was like part Lex and part Superman. Yeah. What I always hated is that he, well, in the last Teen Titans series that we both really like, he kind of did, one. but he never actually got a full run where he was just full bad guy for a long time. Right. It was just bits and pieces. Instead, they there. brought in Superboy Prime. Yeah. Why not just let the clone who already has some Lex in him? go crazy and you know rip people in half why not try to forgive that guy you can't i don't know you can't that's that's a whole nother story right there it is right there there's so much to go there i wrote that <laughs> that's two <laughs> but um you know moving on as much as we'd love to sit here and ramble comics like we always do with you we got to keep the show rolling so after these messages we will return with a uh, new segment of the uh, movies remix, which we haven't done in a while. No, we haven't. We'll and we're be gonna, discussing we're gonna uh, swing old school, man. Old school. We won't tell you what it is. We'll tell you Just, what it is. It's in time for Halloween. And it's the, not per se a horror movie, but. It's just it's, it's a, a classic. classic. It's they a come classic. Back with new stuff. They have. They still have their book out. Uh, whatever. Comic ah. fans love it. We'll be back. Movies remixed. Welcome everybody to Movies Remixed. We're here with Junior. Hey John, How's you're still going? here? Yeah, I'm still here. All I'm right. Still the contract. Hey. Where's works. your belt? Where's your belt, man? You look a little. Who? Where's your belt? No. No, no belt. Oh, okay. No, just knocked him off. Right? Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. talking no about Johnny Freeze. He's oh, he's not okay. here. He's training. Because he's a punk. Yeah, he's a little pussy. That's why. Hey, dude, you know, Are you seriously punch? sticking to the fucking? Okay, okay. Hey. Anyways, we're talking Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Today. Classic Ghostbusters. I had to go there. I like how he was doing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Milking both of us there. There you go. Anyways, you are awesome. Ghostbusters. They still got books out. They got a new movie coming out. And we eventually, there's a movie? Eventually. Oh, eventually. oh yeah. Duh. One day. 
But for now, we still got the classic. Junior, your best memories out of Ghostbusters. Too many. <laughs> Way too many. Dude, I just watched it like four days ago with Sadie, and it's still one of the best movies out there. In the that movie, I world. actually, I have that movie on my iPod. The so fact it's that it's a Halloween viewer. tradition. The you fact that so much of it was done with props and not as much CG. It's still probably one of the best things in the world, and they need to bring a lot more of that. Onion back. Head here is a prime example. Slimer. Slimer. Slimer, dude. No. When he was first designed, he smelled like okay. they had onions, and they called him Onion Head. But he's Slimer. Well, they developed that for the new. for uh, That was the real Ghostbusters, right? The cartoon? Or was that the new Ghostbusters? I don't know which one. Can I choke him now? Yes, go ahead. You're <laughs> <laughs> supposed to say no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Bad moderator. No, no. Bad moderator. Yeah. Slimer's original name was Onion Head. How did you get into Ghostbusters? Being such a young lad that you are. That's a great question. Did you start off with the cartoons that used to come Look, out? Look, no, remember he's not as bright. Are there certain cartoons? Remember. When how did you feel when they revamped the cast in the cartoons for the extreme yeah, Ghostbusters? Yeah, extreme Ghostbusters. When it was this uh, Egon was in charge, but it was like four. New yeah, people. and then they had the guy in the wheelchair. I didn't really watch it. Ironside. I didn't, was that his name? No, no. I'm thinking about the cop show. <laughs> 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 no, I, I stopped watching it by that point. Really you, did, you never got into. Did you watch? Those? I, I couldn't watch. I never watched Extreme Ghostbusters. I've I've looked up the. The stories were actually pretty good, man. At that point, I had grown out of Ghostbusters, and I was watching other shit. I don't remember what. Probably Power Rangers. Which really? <laughs> <laughs> <didn't laughs> <see, which laughs> really I was saying, saying, yeah, yeah, I wanted yeah. to see what you grew. <laughs> <laughs> what was the leap? You know, <laughs> well, where's the maturity? <laughs> it just I don't know, dude. I, Extreme Ghostbusters didn't catch my attention. So when did you catch up? Being the young buck. I can't remember. I think my parents brought it home from the library one day. Oh, it's cool. Why don't you speak up so the camera can hear you? I like working myself. This right. isn't a library, John. I know it's not a library. Okay. So anyway, people think yeah, parents brought it home from the library one day. <laughs> 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 My deafness is kicking in, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Good, good time for that. Yeah. But yeah, parents brought it home from the library, and that's how I first saw it. Okay. Well, anyways. And you're talking about extreme ghost, but no. No, no, no. Like the, the first, so the first movie. The first, first movie. I was thinking to that. Gotcha. Yeah. Favorite character? First movie. Peter. Peter? Bankman? Of course. That was easy. Wait, wait. Hey. Bill did, Murray, did they, man. Yeah. Okay, in the movie, he he says he got his PhDs, right? Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. he, he's in psychology and all that stuff. He was just, he's the slacker of the He just barely got by. You know what I mean? Didn't it feel his like, theories are the worst popular tripe, and he has a poor But didn't it feel scientist. like he was actually just like a hustler living there? Yeah. You seem you, you think that science is some form of dodge or hustle. I would I would quoting the movie. I like that. I would love to see love if, if there were ever a shot of Peter Bankman's actual PhDs because I really actually, do think he was just like a they're behind the wall. Yeah, there. yeah, there is. By his when, desk, when he's in the desk and uh, Walter and he, Peck comes in from the environmental the first Walter time. Peck. Yeah. yeah. Is yeah. this true? Yes, yes, it's true. This man has no dick. <laughs> One of the best lines ever. <laughs> Tell them about the Twinkie theory. <laughs> Man, that whole movie is just what, awesome. What one of the, the one of the creepiest scenes growing up, because you guys know about my religion and everything like that. You know I'm, how I am. One of the creepiest the scenes was the car, the the car scene where it was uh, Ray and uh, Winston. Yeah. They're on the bridge mm -hmm. and they're talking about Judgment Day and things out of the Bible because the tone of the movie changed at that point. There was no comedy. Mm -hmm. It was very dark. You know, it was very yeah. eerie. There was no music. It was just. That conversation is like that creepy, creepy conversation. I was just thinking that part always stuck with me. What? Because when, like, whenever someone brings up Judgment Day, I always think of T two Judgment Day. That's what I just think of. I can see that. I can see that tie in. T two just ripping down the hood of the car. I'm like, come with me. You want to live? That wasn't T two. That was T one. Yeah. No, T2. I'm, I'm referring to T2, the movie. Okay, okay, never mind. I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel you. All right. Cool. Perfectly yeah. perfectly reasonable and nerd response. Yeah. No, All right. No, no, no. You're, you're we're good. We're good. We're good. All right, man. All right. Yeah. You're the moderator. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry, man. I just got stuck on T2 mode for a second there. No, Ghostbusters. Scarier, funniest moment in Ghostbusters? What's something that you'd like to see out of this new movie? Out of this new one? Uh, Bill Murray, because I actually saw. Wait, is he not going to no. be in it? No, Bill Murray's not going to be in it. He's denied it. He's denied it. Uh, uh, Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis offered him to reprise his role, and he said no. Yeah. He, he just Bill Murray he, just he just he doesn't want to do comedies anymore. He just wants to do the that needs serious films. He also feels that Ghostbusters has already run its mm -hmm. course, even though it has a huge yeah. fan base. He just feels don't milk, you know, mm -hmm. don't keep beating the dead horse. But Dan Aykroyd said on Larry King, he's like. He's like, the door's always open for Billy. He's a good friend, so even if, like, the last moment he wants to do a little cameo thing, 
So what do you guys feel is the point of this movie? Is it just like a couple people that really need the money? It was, you is know it what, it was an I No, I... Are you talking about the new movie? The, the new movie that's supposed, to, that's supposed to come out. We won't even talk about the new movie because it's been in rumor mm-hmm. since we were in fucking God knows when. Yeah. That's true. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. it's Ghostbusters 1, mm-hmm. man. The original. That's where it's at. Did you guys ever see the storyboards out of that movie? Yes, yes. I have. I have... Um, in class, when I looked at those storyboards, it actually looked like a comic artist mm-hmm. did those storyboards. Yeah. Was it a comic artist? Probably. Yeah. We don't have any backstory on that guy. I don't, I don't we got to dig that one up, man, because mm-hmm. they were really beautiful storyboards. Oh yeah. That whole movie, just in general, was just is a classic. I grew up with it, you know. Mm-hmm. When you guys were young, did you guys even know what a Hearst was? Oh yeah. When Dan yeah. Aykroyd pulled up in the yeah, I yeah. just thought it was a cool. I didn't car. know the name. I didn't, I didn't know, know why I like, we I didn't knew, own one. I knew what it was for. I didn't know it had an official name. I was like, oh look, the the yeah. funeral car. I knew what a hearse was. I just thought that that car was like an old fire truck. I because they were in a firehouse. Yeah, essentially. I just looked at it, man. You could fit a lot of people in there. <laughs> That's all I did. Was that like a stereotypical <laughs> response? I think so. I don't know. I now let me take over real quick. Go ahead. Toys. Well, you were too young when the original mm-hmm. Ghost. You weren't even around when those Ghostbuster toys came out. You're still in your I daddy's was... sack. <laughs> Did you have any Ghostbuster toys? I don't remember. <laughs> nah, I had your Ghostbusters toys. That's what I thought. I can't remember. It might have had the house, or like uh, uh, I'm no, mine. I might have had a third party house that I got from the flea market that wasn't exactly Ghostbusters. Just like another different place that house that had Ghostbusters stickers on it. So Sounds it might have right. not been <laughs> <laughs> Ghostbusters. Sounds house. about right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, just no. I, they they were heavily pushed, just like Ninja Turtles. Just like Ninja mm-hmm. Turtles had like, like, like did Donatello the had the had everywhere. the basketball mm-hmm. Donatello and and all kinds of shit. There was like the same thing with uh, Ghostbusters. Did you hang out to any of your old school stuff in the package? <laughs> Is that a trick no. question? All right, then. <laughs> not in the package. I still I have some, but it's because I went back and bought them as a collector now. Yeah, not as much as I like. I have the original Firehouse mint sealed in a sealed box. Thank you, Lou. Um. I've got. I still have my original firehouse though. Yeah. Um. And I've got like maybe one or two vehicles. I don't have a lot from Ghostbusters yet. Was there ever a toy where Slimer where he could actually slime things? Probably. I honestly don't know. That needs to come back. I just want to throw Slimer at people. Just buy a pack of. Everyone watching jack. part one. Yeah. <laughs> you know it's funny because that's one of those movies that as you watch it you always pick up something new. Like I as an adult mm-hmm. I'm watching and I'm hearing a lot of one liners and like oh, I yeah. get it now you know and. It's just a lot of stuff. I love that movie. One thing that I really love about it is how they not how they didn't explain things that really did need to be explained. Like Evo Shandor like, a little bit more. Or the fact that they did have nuclear mm. power strapped to their back. Because mm. now we're in an era where so many things have to be explained, where so many things have to be so relatable, where it's like Superman has to deal with the government. Well, well, you have you have this classic slapstick stuff where it's like, okay, well, no, we're just gonna have well, nuclear power weapons. Well, that's the comedic aspect of it, because it was a comedy. Right, yeah. So you just go in there and just slap. But do you have your copy of Tobin's Spirit Guide? No. Well, yeah. It'll fucking each year, like you can go on Amazon or something, they sell an updated version of Tobin's Spirit Guide, which is I don't know, I think it's user submitted stuff, and the original one has like all the stuff they talked about yeah. in the book, completely explored. Stuff I think like they talked about. What what was the name of the dog that possessed Rick Moranis? Uh, Zool. No, no, Zool. No, Zool. Zool, was, Zool was the yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gozer. Gozer. Yeah. No, Gozer was the main one. No, that was Zool. No, Zool was the gatekeeper. Gozer was the giant god. The chick. The one that possessed Rick Rick Moranis was the actual guy that held the cult. It was like his spirit. Wasn't no, Evo Shandor was never, he was only mentioned. He was not in there whatsoever. Didn't he introduce himself that way? Like, no. I am Evo, no. blah, blah, no. blah, I am the no. key master. Um, crap, I can't remember his name. Whatever. Okay, anyways, go ahead. In Tolkien Spirit Guide, they talk about, like, how he appeared multiple times beforehand. Like, apparently, there's, like, certain time lengths of when they show up or whatever. And one of them was that dog or whatever came to, like, an old school boarding house in, I believe, like, the 1920s. And it possessed a kid, started attacking all the other people, like killed a teacher, and then ran off during the night during a horrible storm. And then they found out like the kid hung himself in the front gate, and the soul escaped. And there you go. I'm like, oh, that's fucking great. That's, 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 that's the explain. nuclear power packs that they're carrying, yeah. man. Because you talked about the mythology of how they explored stuff. No, I talked about how they didn't have to have to explain things that should have been explained. By Tolkien's spirit guy. I see where he's coming from. He does have a point. Too. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not, I don't know how to compare that to uh, 
nuclear power pack. It's not a toy. Dude. It's not meant for Uranium. Alright, man. Keep Sorry, monitoring. It's just, it's just me, man. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. But no, it's, okay, well, what I'm leading to is how do you feel if something like that were brought into a newer movie? Do you feel that there would be a lot of fan backlash? Like, hey, why are they wearing nuclear crap on there? You know, no. I think only only the hardcores would immediately no. get it. Yeah, that's why yeah. I, I think no, because Ghostbusters has such a hardcore fan built in fan base already. We don't care. Yeah. You know, you don't have to explain it. This is not Iron Man where you have to explain all the tech. You know, this is not Star Trek. This is not any of these kinds of techie movies where it's just like, you know what, hey, they could maybe even explain it in one quick line or something. Which is yeah. or in a joke. Which actually goes into another unexplained thing. How great was it that even though this was their first movie, it didn't have to be an necessarily an origin movie of how they actually met it's kind of like it's kind of like there's ghosts they need to mm -hmm. solve the problem hence they form ghostbusters it didn't need to drag on into like them in college you know well, they kinda took stuff. Like well they, you know the backstory was introduced through uh, dialogue yeah that's why yeah and that's they, it but there was no flashbacking the, yeah. there wasn't like it like, worked as long yeah. as as long as you could explain it and it was explained in dialogue so there was no need for any of that stuff well, okay they kind of took like the business aspect of it where the guys are just in it for the business they're not in it because they're lifelong buddies and they're you know, they're there for the journey no they did it because well it's the new defense science of the next decade bigger than the microchip i just love that damn movie <laughs> so many great scenes. it was well written yeah. and it, especially Extremely in that well. sense through the dialogue marshmallow mm -hmm. man yeah great Actually, actually, that was probably one of the better reactions. I couldn't, like, when I first saw it when I was a little kid, I didn't know if he shot himself <laughs> or if he was having a stroke. And it was like, wait, he just dreamt up of marshmallows. Yeah. Yeah, one of the best things in the world. Yeah. Very but, creative. Mm. What have Very we learned from this movie that we should adapt to our future? How do I want to put this? Like, not necessarily. You're asking what movies. we learned from Ghostbusters that we need to apply for? Because it was actually a well-written movie. Well, to okay, I'm sorry. I didn't you finish. To future comic movies. Yeah. I thought you were going to say to oh. real life. For some reason, I thought that's where no, you were going. No, that's a real life. That's why I was like, really? <laughs> you're well, when I see a I ghost. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. It's not always visuals. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, not always visuals that make a great movie. I mean, yeah, it helps, especially in this day and age where everything is uh, run by CGI and all these special things, all this shit. It's just because if you look, yeah, Ghostbusters has some special effects, but some of it was very cheesy. With like the scene where uh, the demon motherfucker, my phone's going off. Let's just go ahead and mute that. Oh, there, mm -hmm. um, be a dick. Oh yeah, right. filming. Go ahead, continue. Um, <laughs> like when uh, the dog wakes up in Rick Moranis' closet and like mm. he's chasing Rick Moranis out of the apartment building, totally tell that he was added onto the film. And you yeah. Know, you yeah. see yeah, the yeah, crappy yeah. effects. Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't. I mean, yeah, like I said, it was high tech for the time, but it doesn't necessarily mean. You need special effects. It's all in the story and in the uh, presentation. Well, and that and you didn't have to take it too serious. You right. knew it was yeah. cheesy. You're yeah. gonna have fun with it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that goes back to when we interviewed uh, Angel Medina. He was talking about how things are getting a little too serious. Actually, a lot of people are saying that things are getting too serious. Why not have more cheesier effects? Right. Right. What's wrong with that? Why does everything have to be so so clean cut and look so so real? Why is that so necessary? Because Ghostbusters, even for its time, didn't look real. Like when yeah. the when the dog breaks through the door and it's running through the hallway. When I first saw it, I was like, "Damn, I mean. yeah, yeah." That's, that's so what here's I'm talking my about. Question: Why is it the, like the dogs like they look like real textures and stuff? Like you can actually touch them, while the rest of the ghosts were just ectoplasm. Why? Why do we have to explain that to you? What's the problem? That's like explaining them the backpacks. You didn't need to. Yeah, fair enough. Touché. There's just so much in there. Like I think the only thing you need to know was don't cross the stream. Yes. <laughs> That's the only thing that I learned is like, oh, shit. <laughs> don't I cross like, the stream. I like Robot Chicken's joke on that. Here's what did they say? No, it was uh, two of the ghost birds that they're at a urinal, and one of them yeah, just like yeah. turns over, and they're like, dude, don't cross the streams. That's old. Yeah, it's an old joke. Clutter. All right, so yeah. Anyways, uh, would you actually say probably when I think about modern movies compared to something good like Ghostbusters, would the best student from Ghostbusters be a movie like Paranormal Activity? No, definitely no. Almost no special effects, very minimal. Yeah. But the thing is, though, like even though Ghostbusters didn't really have a lot, they still at least showed the presence of ghosts. While Paranormal Activity is just, ooh, I'm being dragged by air, out of a door. Woo! You know, I would kind of like to at least see the ghost. You know, see if it's, I don't know, demonic or 
just but see that like that's part of the the fun of it. Whereas you have to use your own imagination, which makes it even scarier because it could mm-hmm. be anything. Whereas as opposed to them telling you what it looks like. Yeah. You know, it might be something as big as this, <laughs> and then you're picturing it to be like some big towering monster. You never know. Then who fills the role? Of the original Ghostbusters. See, These now this is, they, they're getting old. This they're is why I wanted to say I didn't watch Extreme Ghostbusters because, like I said, at the time it was I thought you know I was too young to understand it. Mm-hmm. There's continuation. I thought it was more of okay, they're just taking an old idea and making it new again. Like when Beast Wars first came out, I didn't watch Beast Wars because I get the Transformers ripoff. Then I realized, oh, it's part of the Transformers mythos. Mm-hmm. So if I were to go back today and watch Extreme Ghostbusters, yeah, I would. But I think the move, the new movie would have to be something like that, where it's like, okay, guys, you know, Egon and uh, Ray are going to sit there and they're going to form a new group. Which is actually know. the basis for this. Right, movie. and it's supposed to be Sigourney Weaver's kid, or whatever, yeah. Oscar. The Oscar. Baby. Um, so I can see them training. He's a named group. after a pot, hot dog, you poor man. Poor, poor man. Oh, yeah, we're going in the second one now. Part two was still good. Yes, it was. I still like it. And then who fills the void as far as the writing? Do you think they're still going to be in charge of the writing? I say yeah, because them. they actually have the whole script written. Yeah. Yeah, they wrote it. Mm-hmm. And obviously they know what they're doing, otherwise they still mm-hmm. wouldn't be around making the movies they're yeah. making. Yeah. But it wouldn't hurt to bring out somebody else just to, you know, mm-hmm. as a consultant or something. Okay, giant closing thoughts on Ghostbusters. Greatest lo- movie in the world, apparently. I love the subtle humor in it. They didn't have to set up a lot of stuff. It was all just regular casual dialogue within it they didn't have to you know pretend to be joking around with each other i like that they didn't freak out about anything everything was just kind of, oh shit there's a ghost let's go get it yeah well, it's like all, except <laughs> for the first time <laughs> so yeah the, the first time when they oh, first shit. seen slimer <laughs> <laughs> well yeah that remember when they seen slimer yeah. and ray drops a cigarette and it still stuck yeah, to his like, yeah. that was funny yeah yeah um closing notes a great movie classic one of my top 10 out of the top five even um that's one movie that I personally would give four out of four. I, it's my all-time favorite Halloween movie. I always watch it on Halloween. Better than Hocus Pocus? Yes. Wow. <laughs> four out of four all the way through. This was Three Grown Men talking about <laughs> Ghostbusters. Next segment, we shoot it back over to John. Actually, the three of us. Yeah. Talking us. wrestling. So mm-hmm. stick around, guys. Hey everybody, what's up? This is another segment of Pepperless Point. Junior's not joining me today. He's off in God knows where. Today I in have parts <laughs> unknown. I have with me Russell's like biggest really hater, David Sanchez. Oh well, I've always been pretty fair about that. I've, everybody who's asked me, I've always been fair. I'm like, dude, I don't watch anymore. You know, well, so I, I don't know why why that really makes me a hater. I just well, it's not my taste anymore. Well, why don't you tell me this in the beginning? I mean, Carrie, Brian, Junior, like they're all wrestling guys. They talk about it, like. How come you I'm never pretty sure I've mentioned it on camera a couple of times. Uh, I probably haven't been paying attention. Or, uh, you know what? Actually, when you probably ask me, I just tell you, go fuck yourself, John. You know, man, words hurt. Yeah, words you hurt. know what? Cheating hurts, too. Yes, it does. Cheating hurts. What are you talking about? Oh, what? Oh, man, oh it's because you don't have your fake belt? Your no, paper chat me right here? I'm not... I'm not the champion. What are you talking about? Oh, I'm sorry. He can't break character, apparently, because this is wrestling and you're not supposed to break character. Go ahead, John. Okay. Shoot with your question. Okay. You know, you said you watched wrestling. Well, what made you want to stop watching wrestling? I mean, come on. Wrestling, wrestling's entertaining, folks. Every week. Well, I mean, stuff. It, it, it's like anything else. It, it sells to a certain market. It's, mm-hmm. it's not mine. It's, it doesn't sell to me anymore. So when you, I, when you, I watch you it, grew out of that. When I watch it, yeah, technically speaking, yeah. Some people okay. wouldn't consider growing out of it because it's still their cup of tea. But for me, my, mm-hmm. my taste just, just changed and they diverted. You know, I really loved it when, when the mythos was going and when the mythos was very well, active. Okay. When please please elaborate for me what, what that mythos was. Are you talking about, like, you know, the Monday Night Wars, you that know, that, NWO? Yeah. Well, that, that could or be an age gap thing. Are you talking about, like, Richard Hulkamania, brother? Well, yeah, that, that, that could be an age yeah. gap thing because when I talked to, like, what if I had this conversation with this conversation with Junior and I mentioned mm-hmm. mythos. We talk about when when it was okay that wrestling was fake, okay. like like uh, like um, better explain like Undertaker was was considered like a dead man and it was okay. okay. 
you know, it's only like when he came out with a crow or something like like it's almost like like when you see a magician like like it was okay that that okay. Took us to to see things as mm -hmm. okay it must be real he must really be a dead guy that mm -hmm. guy that guy from Brooklyn that's dressed as a shaman I'm pretty sure he's a shaman <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> you know okay. that kind of stuff now like since you're talking about like all the mythos and stuff and like what got you into it like what made you really want to watch it because when you talk about it now and how like you don't like it I found it really hard to believe that you were a fan in general just in the beginning no when I was a kid that that was um my comic book I guess mm -hmm. of that time you know everything everything was was a character ultimate warrior was a character uh, there was the good guys versus the bad guys uh, even Ricky the dragon steamboat to me like he didn't have like the biggest like backstory <laughs> like like the Hulkamaniac backstory but okay. I still consider him as as he was Ricky the character mm. um, yeah and I guess to me I, I saw that that was that was okay. the soap opera that I liked as a kid um, that attracted me just as much as a Saturday morning cartoon attracted me. Okay. But it's weird. That's not a good comparison mm. because I still really like Saturday morning cartoons. <laughs> Who doesn't? Just Who doesn't not wrestling cartoons. cartoons. But Although yeah. when wrestling had a cartoon, it was pretty cool. Wrestling had a cartoon? You Hulk son Hogan's of a rock bitch. And <laughs> you son of a bitch. Are you serious? Yes, they did. Yeah. Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. Uh -huh, that's why they call it the Rock and Wrestling era for a reason. It okay. would. Oh my god. Makes more sense now. Okay. Why am I on this show? <laughs> because no, 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 no. it's, it's cool. I get, I get it. What you're, you're more into like from, from where? From the '90s, from the Attitude Era, and till a now, little bit right? before. It. Yeah, till now. Yeah, yeah, see, I grew up with the cheese, the cheesiness, the, the fake mm -hmm. stuff. That to me okay. was poured on thick, like, like cheese on mac and cheese, and I loved it. I ate it up. So Not just because I'm a cheesiness fat kid, I make is that like metaphor. mac and cheese with more cheese on it. Um, and and right Very about creative. right about the time when things started getting more real, where where people just really had the need to reveal their backstories and you had to really know about Someone how, on the backstage how, wall hey, that was guy, ripped down. Yeah, when that oh that okay. guy is not Hulkamaniac, he's uh, an abusive husband that likes banging other chicks that look like his daughter. You know, that was like, all right, I'm out of here. I don't here. know if that's true for um, any wrestler, but the visuals when the visuals really started coming down, like like when Undertaker popped up in a motorcycle that was just that was really like, like the American badass. That, that was really in your face, like mm -hmm. like it's real. Deal with it. I'm gonna park my motorcycle here. But did, did you like? And the, put my whiskey over you, here. Yeah, did you like him when he was the American badass? <laughs> Not at all. Really? Not mm -hmm. at all. Um, hey, that, that must be another generation. Wasn't yeah, he using like a tomb, like a power bomb move? And well, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why Why did he get rid of the tombstone? I think it's just because like the tombstone was more like the mythos of people were getting hurt. Yeah, people were getting hurt, they were getting injured, and... Like, you know what, I was actually going to say that, and I was surprised you didn't say that. Oh, Pe people were straight up getting hurt. Who was the guy that had his neck broken? Austin. Yeah, Austin yep. did. Austin, who else? The, the, the guy who threw up a lot. Didn't he get messed up by, by like, a, uh, a lot, like a... It was like a... Oh, it was a okay. body slam. Draws. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. like a body slam okay. turned into a power driver move by that Cuban guy. <laughs> it was that. Remember the Cuban guy? He was like the TV champion for a long time, or Puerto Rican guy. Sabio Vega? Yeah, that was his move. Uh, Remember that? It was like... Yeah, like, it was Sabio Vega. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He broke Puke's... Uh, his name was Puke, actually. Puke at the time, yeah. He mm -hmm. broke Puke's neck. And there was a couple other people. Well, I mean, nowadays you don't really see the pile drivers. And you know what? I want to see more necks get broken. <laughs> you you want to bring me back to wrestling? He wants real violence, folks. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You, you ever watch ECW? Well, no, no, well, uh, um, ECW... Um, even that, like, when I watched ECW, I couldn't hang. Because that was still really? kind of like the... Like, very grungy so, type of stuff. So that was way too low budget for me. I had taste by then. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so, I, I'm getting the I feeling had a monocle like, and like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm getting the but, feeling here that you really liked, like, the cartooniness that, like, it was an escape. It wasn't, like, regular sports for you where you turn it on and you're like, oh, it's something I can do outside where... Well, it's a soap opera. Why does it have to be so real? Here's old man David right here. <laughs> it's a damn soap opera with naked chicks and half naked guys walk around conversation, um, having conversations and fighting. Wow. You know, it's a soap opera. Why does that have to be so so serious? You know? Yeah, well, I I think it's just because my generation stuff, like, we want things to be more real. We want them to be more relatable. You know, we we wanna see, you know, more of the backstage stuff, all the I cannot relate to a guy called the or that's part of a team called the Road Warriors. 
I cannot relate to a guy that thinks he lives in if a world where Mad Max If you were in a biker gang that was called the Road Warriors, is. then you could. I cannot... Who is that one guy that ate apples, had an afro? Carlito. I cannot relate to that guy. I don't know You people. eat apples, right? Mm. And then, But I don't go around spitting them on people. Well, that's just unsanitary. But you eat apples, <laughs> right? Mm. But did he do that? Yeah. I cannot relate to that guy. Um, I don't know, man. Thank you for that nice comment. Who, who's like who, right now? Right now, wrestling. Who's like the the guys guy? Who's like who's supposed to be like the more down to earth guy? Do you mean who? If you if you were to sell me this, wait, and the, say the David, most down to earth or the face of the company? Uh, down to earth, I believe is what I said. Uh, you know, it's very yeah, it's very tough. Very do, very tough. What do you mean by down to earth? Uh, more realistic, the more grounded. Cha- the people's champion guy. Who's the people's champion guy that uh, that I should that I should be the related underdog. to? Who's the guy you could root sure, for? Sure, yeah. I got to go. With Daniel Bryan. All the everyone's talking. talking. Yeah, talking. Every, everyone's saying Daniel Bryan. You know, Carrie's saying everyone else that. I don't see Daniel Bryan being the most down to earth guy because Daniel Bryan's going out and saying that you know he's the wrestler. You know, he's not saying he's the what, superstar. What's, what's his character? What's Daniel Bryan's character? What does he do? What's his entrance theme? As of right. Out? He comes out to Flight of the Valkyries. Okay. Yeah, very classical. Comes out. He you know, is he, is he wearing an old school pilot suit? No. Is he wearing an old school operatic Viking old lady fat fat lady suit? No, but you know what? Is that he dressed actually be like very he funny. Could command an orchestra. No. Is he dressed like Patton? No. What is he doing? He's coming out and he's chanting yes, yes, yes or no, depending on the situation. To me, that sounds lazy. Compared to what I grew up with, does he have fireworks? Right. Does he have fireworks? No. Each time the the flight of the Valkyries hits a no, is there like fireworks? No. Does he have one of those cannons that shoots out sparklies or T-shirts? <laughs> no. Preferably T-shirts, double XL because there's a lot of big guys in the audience. Don't be a hater. No, no one's hating on it. No one. I'm talking hating. to the guy who's shooting the T-shirt cannon because I fucking hate it. No one shoots a T-shirt cannon event, right now. And none of these things, they're like all mediums. Anyways, um, I mean, yeah. What does he do? Is there is there any? Yeah, it's so the guy just he's, plays five of the Valkyries and he grunts into the ring. That's his personality. He's being built as this underdog because you know back then everything was you know the big bodybuilders. You know the guys like Hogan, the guys like Warrior, the guys like Savage. No, no, they had freak show fights. They had the fat guys, Yokozuna. I still but don't even know. Being they had big. freak show fights. Keyword being big. No, but the term you want to say is, is freak show fights. They had those. I grew up with AAA, when I, and not because I'm Mexican. <laughs> not because I'm Mexican. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, Dr. Wagner fan? Dr. Wagner Jr.? Who's that? No. That new guy? No. He's been around, dude, for 41 years. Who is he? Well, who was he before? Did he have a different character? No, he was in, he's, he's still in AAA. Dr. Wagner oh. Jr. No, I'm sorry. El Silver King? Maybe. See, Maybe so there you go. See, you. Yeah. That's what I need. All right? I don't want to know your first name. No Parka, Pancho G- Gomez. <laughs> I don't want to see that guy fight. I want to see La Culebra hey. or something. I'm, I'm not trying to be. <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean here. Would you? Would you want to see Matadors wrestling? Like, is that their character? No, With because bull, I actually don't dude. don't condone uh, bullfights. I'm totally against that. What if they had like a little and bull dude stupid. and his name was El Torito? I think that's racist. Okay, you know, uh, I'm not going to come out on that. Why? Is this happening right now? Yes, it is. Oh, my God. Really? (laughs) Yeah. That's just stupid. The fucked up thing is the two guys are Puerto Rican. (laughs) Actually, okay, that's funny. That's funny. That's actually funny. They're not passing them off as Puerto Rican. Well, because no, well, well, because bullfighting is actually from Spain, Spanish. And then Puerto Ricans play them. To me, I think that's all kinds of historically funny. Do they do any funny historical things, or they just come out? It's in the the they, they come out. They got they got a little bull dude, like a little kid that's dressed up as a bull. His name's El Torito. They it's come out. Like, Does he try to cook the smaller guy into lechon? English. I wrote that. Please. <laughs> <laughs> English. Would you tune in if they did? I need <laughs> subtitles. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> subtitles, Does, please. Okay. Does a bigger guy come out and try <laughs> to put him between two plantain bananas and eat him? No. No, yes. it's not. All kinds of comedy is being missed here. See, that would have happened in the 90s. That would have happened in the 90s. Um, I'm not so sure about it. Junior, do you think that would have happened in the 90s? 
they would have tried. <laughs> yes, they would have. Hell yeah, they, they would have. Tried. Okay. Hell yeah. So, so you you miss the cheese. You miss the comedy. You miss the larger you miss than the life. Gimmicks. The gimmicks. The gimmicks. Okay. There's a lot of gimmicks now. There's, there's but no the reason. gimmicks that are out now are more down to earth and more realistic. So you want the over the top okay. gimmicks. There's no reason for it to have be so real. It's a soap okay. opera. So it's a soap opera. And also, you know why too? Because. Um, with all the sex and violence and all the, the action and, and all the emotions that run through it, kids are still watching this stuff, man. And you gotta have the cheese. Yeah. I would not, I would never let my daughter watch this, mostly mm-hmm. because of the divas. That is, they're all sex all the way. For as much as they want to pose them as they're empowered women who know how to fight, fuck that. Everybody wants to watch the divas in the hopes that that bra is gonna snap <laughs> off and they're gonna see some hooters. That's why people watch it. That's why I watched it. Remember uh, what's the what's the what's the chick that came out with Mongo McMichael? Debra. Debra. Mm. When she came out, there were people who just yell puppies because they just wanted to see her hooters. They didn't give a crap about her. I'm being a guy. I'm not gonna deny that. If you fucking did, <laughs> <laughs> this thing would be over. I'd hit you in the nuts really hard. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Junior. But no, okay. I'm kidding. So, yeah, I would. I would okay. never let. My, if, if we were still cheesy. Is Doink the Clown still fighting? Is is no, a version backstage. of Doink the Clown still fighting? He's still back to Is someone backstage. in a clown costume, preferably very obese, still <laughs> fighting? No. There are actually people, though, that dress up as clowns in the crowd, and they're seen on TV quite often. But are they fighting? Does someone drag them out of the crowd? There are fights in, in the crowds. Ring? Well, that's... I Yeah, dude. Are they okay. fighting in Nashville, yeah. Tennessee? Yes, maybe. Okay, my last question to you is, what would it take... Other than all the cheesy gimmicks and all the over-the-top stuff to get you to at least sit down and watch one more episode. To Bret Hart. Night. Bret Hart. Okay. Bret Hart. Stroke and all. With the strong hands. Pin him. <laughs> right there. Boom. Suplex. Okay. All in one move. Then I would recommend for you uh, WWE in 2010 because he was general <laughs> manager in 2010. <laughs> What's up? Bret Hart was general manager of Raw in 2010. He ended up fighting at WrestleMania 26 against Was Mr. it a good Man. fight, or was it like when uh, Ultimate it, Warrior fought Hulk Hogan in that WCW match? Let's go with option B. All right, so what? You, you, you said, so you no, never no, said no, no. if he was fighting. You only but said if he was there. let me tell you what happened, because you're not predetermining the situation. I would have watched it, and I would have hated wrestling even more. Why? Because it was stupid. Bring back the little Puerto Rican guys in the in the cow costumes and cook them. <laughs> you know, I don't know, swing them around. <laughs> you really want them cooked, don't you? No, but just like swing them around, do something. He's a midget, like flip them. He's not a midget. He's a kid. I'm pretty he's sure a kid. he's a dwarf. For legal purposes, I'm pretty sure he's a dwarf. So and because he's a mythical he needs the money, from, and because he uh, needs the money, Lord of the Rings. he would do all the hysterical things we, I, am thinking of him doing. Okay, you know, well, I got a lot of insight on this. No, you, you know, don't. I learned, I, gave a, you I learned a lot from Sanchez. <laughs> I learned a lot from you. You know, so I think of you as not so much a hater anymore. And I know for a fact that, you know, the comic strip champion, even though he's not here. He's crying because he's sorry that he hit you in the face. I'm gonna go now. Okay. All right. Okay. You know, I'm, just, I'm gonna I'm gonna end this now. You know, this has been another segment of Pepper's uh, For point. any of you who care to comment about this, I still think wrestling sucks. If you want to debate that, hit me up on Facebook, David Sanchez, Twitter, Comic Streamix. I thought you were the wrestling baby. sucks. I thought you were John the baby. sucks even more. He sucks a lot, big, big champion. Coming from the guy making all of the uh, motions like it's charades. Big champion! Keep keep talking all you want. This is another segment of Pepperless Point. This is John Pepperless saying, you've been pointing.